I'd like you to understand the anatomy of your nails, how the or infecting organism causes the disease, and what you have to do post-operatively so that you don't get reinfected from the ambient fungus in your environment. What I, if you ever saw a normal nail under a microscope, it's very interesting stuff. It almost looks like a stack of sheets of paper. These sheets are extremely thin. Think of a hundred times thinner than a piece of saran wrap. These sheets are made up of cells made up of keratin. Keratin is what's on your skin that prevents water from getting into your skin. These keratinocytes, the borders of the cells, are fused together. And each layer is then adherent to the next layer. And then the bottom layer is adherent to your nail bed, which is very specialized material. And it's made to accept the nail onto it. Uh, nails are derived from scales, like fish and reptiles have. And they're basically impenetrable. Uh, it's very hard to get fungus into a nail. In fact, you have to have a traumatic event. Now, that traumatic event can be stubbing your toe, dropping something on your toe, cracking your toe, toenail. And once that ambient dust that has fungal spores in it gets into that keratin, it eats keratin. It's just like wood rot, where the wood rot eats the, cellulo, the, the cellulose of the wood, the fungal organism involved with athlete's foot, trichophyton rubrum, which is 95% of the cases, uh, it eats the keratin of your nails. It has to mechanically get in there. That's why in a lot of people, it starts on the first or the fifth nail of their foot. Why? Because that's the one that's hitting up against their shoe. And this is the entry point at the tip of the nail where the layers of the nail are exposed. But I'll tell you another traumatic event. If you cut that nail and then cut the next nail, well, now you're introducing that mechanically with your, with your clipper into the substance of your next nail. That's why it spreads from nail to nail. It's very contagious when it's spread that way. Then what do you do? Then you coop it up in your fungus incubators, otherwise known as shoes. Shoes, uh, can you think of a better place to grow a mold? It's warm, it's dark, it's moist, all feet sweat, and it's a great place to grow fungus. They already have all the food they want. Now you make conditions which predispose to the fungal growth. That's why we treat all 10 nails, because even though it may be not quite apparent that a nail is infected, uh, it may be infected that we cannot, in a way that we cannot see it visibly. So while we're in the neighborhood, and while I have the FDA approved laser to treat you, we treat all of the nails. And then we know for sure when you leave here, you'll have no living fungus in your nails. But it's not over yet. Because what happens is, then you have to not get, when these irregular borders of the nail are there, there's, there's openings in them. If you would do a cross section through some of these very thickened, diseased, eaten up nails, it would almost look like a honeycomb. The holes are filled with your own spores, and so we have to um, prevent new dust and new living fungus from getting in there and reinfecting you. That's why my post-operative care is very important, and I've perfected a way to do it where I get virtually 100% cure. You have several treatment options. Uh, you can do nothing. Uh, it will never go away. You'll die with it unless you get treated. Uh, you, you, even if somebody removed that nail, virtually 100% of the time it comes back with fungus in it. Please don't let anybody remove any of your fungal nails, promising or hoping that they will get better. It won't. Uh, you can take the oral medication, basically it's ketoconazole or lamisil, and um, they're very caustic medications that are very good for people that have immunosuppressed and may have abscesses of opportunistic fungal organisms that wouldn't normally uh, uh, affect a normal person. But it can be a life-saving thing in a person that is immunosuppressed and has a brain abscess of fungus. But for your fungal nails, how do you think those medications, a pill that you take, how do you think it works on your nails? Well, 
uh, there's no blood vessels in your nails. So how does a pill kill the fungus in your nails? Well, did you ever see like CSI or something like that, where they dig up a dead body and they analyze the hair? They say, oh, this person was poisoned with arsenic because there's arsenic in the hair. What happened was they took arsenic and it got excreted. It got exposed all of the living cells of their body to this medication. But then it got excreted by the hair follicle into the hair. Well, you have to take enough Lamisil or Ketoconazole long enough until enough of it gets excreted into your nails. And then when the fungus that's in your nails tries to eat the Lamisil containing nail, it can kill the fungus. They have all kinds of dosage regimes to try to decrease the amount of damage that these medications do to your uh, body, so especially your liver. But um, they basically uh, uh, decrease the chance that it's going to work also. The statistics are that if you took Lamisil every day, orally, for a year, you'd have a 50% uh, chance of it working on you. But with the laser, the FDA approved laser, I get virtually 100% cure. What you'll see happen is, in every nail, guaranteed when you leave my office, you'll have no living fungus in your nail. And you'll see nice clear nail growing out at the base of each affected nail. And you'll see the old nail growing out. Um, but that's not the end. You can see how those uh, porous nails Exposed, there's ambient dust. Even just regular old candida and other things can, that's, uh, and especially the invasive athlete's foot type fungus, of, uh, can get into those holes in your nails and reinfect your nail. That's why you have to have good care, and I teach you post operatively how to not get reinfected. Plus, I support you, I relaser you, I have you come in every two to three months. And what I, my battle line is that clear nail, and I help you until it gets to the end of your nail bed. Once that nail reaches the end of your nail bed and it's tightly sealed and closed, then you don't have to worry anymore. But until then, you have to take good care of your feet, of your shoes, of your clippers, and um, I have a, a regime that I use medications that help kill the fungus that may have escaped your preventive measures that day. So, that's basically how I treat you. There's no pain involved. You may feel a sense of heat. It's virtually, with the FDA-approved technology, it's virtually impossible for me to burn you. And managing close to 2,000 patients and following them all up myself um, over the last three years, I uh, have never burnt a person. It's pretty much impossible. That's why this is the FDA-approved technology. Uh, at our San Diego Laser Center, we kill the fungus in your nails, we teach you how not to get it back, we give you support during the recuperation of your nail. During that time, for the next six months or so, you've got to be very careful to not get reinfected, but I'm going to support you anyway, even if you do. And then, once your nails are normal, you can run through the family fitness center barefoot every day if you want. You'll get athlete's foot again, but it won't get into an intact nail.